Welcome to BizJet TV. My name is Fabrizio Pauli. Today we've got an interesting episode uh, focused on AI, artificial intelligence and private jets. Uh, we've got a special guest, Cyrus uh, Parsa from uh, San Diego in California. He's going to be joining us. He's the author of Artificial Intelligence Dangers to Humanity. He's also the founder and CEO of the AI organization. So big expert on AI. Um, he has been in the past a bit of a controversial individual. Um, I don't agree with all his, his uh, things he says on the interview, uh, but I did feel that it's important to give people a voice. I don't believe in censorship. So I thought we'd just run the way we, we did the interview. Um, so have a listen, have a watch. Um, uh, Cyrus comes up with some very, very interesting uh, concepts and, and that uh, regarding artificial intelligence. His book is very interesting. I do encourage you to get a copy. Um, so uh, yeah, and of course at the end of the video, please comment below. Let's get a conversation going uh, about AI, about you know the ethics of AI and all that kind of stuff, which is what we go into uh, in the um, in the interview. So let's go straight for it, and off we go. Welcome to BizJet TV. And uh, so, as we've been in this lockdown situation worldwide because of COVID-19, um, one of the interesting things is, as people start traveling again, uh, the only 3.5% of the ultra-high net worth individuals in the world actually own a private jet. Now, I've been getting a lot of calls over the last few weeks, people that, you know, they've got the money to buy a jet and run a jet, and they're saying to me, I want to buy an airplane, Fabrizio. I want to travel privately. I don't want to fly with the airlines anymore. Uh, this is what that people are telling me and also lots of my colleagues that sell airplanes. Uh, what's your take on all this? And how do you think this whole lockdown thing is going to influence air travel and private air travel? I think this lockdown thing will have a lot of positive uh, innovations as long as we as a civilization have a positive outlook and overcome it, which I think we will in the long term. So uh, with, with COVID, as you know, uh, people are afraid of exposure or being... Uh, maybe uh, uh, if you want to go on a uh, commercial flight in the future, you may have to have a certain digital pass or, or, or depending on where you go. So it's, it actually makes sense for, uh, for not only the, the ones who actually can afford it, but in the future, it'll be cheaper to buy, buy your own private jets and even uh, flying machines. Those type of people will want to have their own aircraft. And it'll, it'll be more like a family setting and or the people you know, and you don't have to go through the, the strict requirements if, uh, if a remedy is not uh, achieved uh, with, with whatever remedy uh, your country that's in, that they want to use to combat the situation in this pandemic. Yeah, some countries are talking about vaccinations, some countries yeah. are talking about a special pass. I think the UK government is working on a special COVID pass, uh, which you have to have to, to, to fly. Um, or go on a cruise ship or, or whatnot. Um, so certainly, I think there's going to be a lot of disruption in airports, especially if you want to get on a commercial flight. I mean, we saw this happen after 9-11 with all the security checks. Well, add on to that the, the, the virus check, which I've been saying for a number of episodes here on Bizdet TV, and now you, you have to go to the airport four hours before your flight instead of three. Uh, yeah, while well, with a private aircraft, you know, you drive your car up to the airplane and off you go, and some of these new aircraft that come in, you park it on your roof. And off you go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the kind of thing. But now, what technological developments are we going to be seeing in the next five to ten years with private jet travel, do you think, with, with the technology? Well, that put in these it, so it won't just be pri private jets. It'll be a, a collage of different uh, machines that will fly. So we have this 5G system that's coming in. As I put in one of my videos, 5G is not made for human beings. It's made for machines. So yeah. not just yeah. autonomous vehicles on, on the ground. But it, it, you could have a future that's similar to the Jetsons, the cartoon that yep. dates back many decades. Yeah. So this 5G system on, on the ground will interlink with the satellite system, within the geolocation to communication, and even technology that will be developed in the future that will be between <laughs> this, this communication. So... You'll see uh, a lot of uh, uh, new buyers within the private jet uh, uh, communities, but they'll be autonomous private jets. So uh, at the beginning, there'll be robot arms or robots doing the, the flying for you, even from takeoff. 
and landing. But later on, it may become virtual, not just for the, um, uh, the private jets, but for machines. So drone-like with propellers and uh, just like if you buy a drone in the store, it'll be very similar to that. You get into one, it'll fly it for you. But the, the things that I see coming uh, will be actually uh, maybe on the realm of luxury within inside mm -hmm. uh, of your crafts. So you may come into a craft and you have an artificial narrow system. Uh, so artificial intelligence has three assist, uh, levels, according to scientists. Mm -hmm. Artificial narrow intelligence is the first level, and that is comprised of your smartphones, mm -hmm. um, your IoT's internet of things, chatbots, could be a virtual bot or, or an actual real, uh, robot. It's just, uh, artificial general intelligence is the next step up. And some people like Elon Musk and some other uh, entities, they believe they're, they can get there in the next couple, couple of years. And so a company uh, that I investigated that's in my book, Artificial Intelligence, Danger to Humanity, it's Hansi Robotics yeah. out, of, uh, out of Hong Kong. They wanna make live conscious, conscious robots, which that it can think, feel, want, desire, and have wishes like an, like an average person. But then again, you may, if it has that, and through deep learning, it may have, or actually would have, the device of a human being. So you'd have um, uh, jealousy or ego or anger or such, these, these things. That, and that can connect to the 5G network. If it's not a robot, it's a digital brain. So it's a virtual, virtual uh, um, entity that connects to the 5G network. Like, like Jarvis. So fast. Like Jarvis. Sorry? Yeah. Like Jarvis in Iron Man. Yes, yes. So, so you have Jarvis in the private jet. So there'd be this Jarvis thing. Correct. And even beyond. And then, uh, then you have the next level with artificial super intelligence. So our AGI, artificial general intelligence, can actually go beyond the human way of thinking and people can't perceive you on the 5G network. On the artificial super intelligence, it's something, according to Elon Musk, they can see human beings as an insect. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, I hope it sees us in a benevolent way and doesn't want to kill off humanity. Well, artificial super intelligence, there's many ways to get to it. One of the ways that Google and other companies have been trying to get to is by extracting humanity's biometrics, the facial recognition, your voice recognition, your geolocation, your family data, and, and the way your brain is mapped. That goes to Google AI and they try to create artificial super intelligence. But my take, my risk assessment is, so even if you put this in, in and you connect us to aviation and, and, and um, not just the grid system that connects uh, our, our satellites that monitors and regulates our, the, the actual flights, but this AI super intelligence can just take over everything. And it, at that time, it, it could become rogue. Um, so that's been the, the fear of scientists and then uh, previous to that of, of movies that we've had. And it's the fear currently. So my take is, is with the aviation, everything needs to stay at the level of artificial narrow intelligence, not even get close to artificial general intelligence. But it's be nice when you walk in, you get into an aircraft, a jet or it could just be a, a, even a vehicle. So there, there'll be vehicles that'll be coming out in the next few years that you'll park in your garage, but then you'll drive off and then you can fly. Yeah, there's about 50 projects like that and we've covered them here on BizJet TV. The yeah. EV tolls, they're called the electrical vertical takeoff yes. and landing. Yeah, there's about 50 projects out there at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, that's certainly for the short distance flying, um, even up to like 1500 miles, it's, uh, it's going to be the way. And then obviously, if you have to go further, then you need a conventional aircraft. Unless Elon Musk does pull off the thing he's been threatening to pull off, which is the hypersonic electrical verti vertical takeoff and landing airplane, which will obviously change everything. Um, yes. But anyway, continue. Well, for, in terms of luxury, it, it'd be nice for anyone to, to come into a place and the AI system knows who you are in terms of the craft and gives you the things that you're used to. And then, uh, so you, it can, it can interface with your brain. So what Elon Musk wants to do, and I don't want, I don't agree with getting to this level. He wants to put a little neural lace in, into your brain. And the CIA and even the Air Force, they, they've been working on things for the past 20, 30 years that has the, 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 um, the actual, um, the person navigating the, 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 the craft, they can connect uh, with their brain by putting a little device on their forehead yeah, that connects yeah. to a pineal gland in different areas. By doing that, they can actually operate the craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So 
with, with virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality, putting that within uh, the, the, not only the confines of your craft, but building it within the system. That means it can be an interactive process between the human being that comes inside the craft and the actual um, craft, which is almost like a living organism, mandated and governed by AI system. But at that point, it wouldn't be artificial neural intelligence anymore. It would be almost in the realm of artificial general intelligence. So you can make your air aircraft alive in a sense. And this, this is not 50 years away. This can be achieved in under 10 years. Yeah, okay, okay. Now, do you think that, you know, with a lot of these electrical vertical takeoff and landing and vertical takeoff and landing flying machines in general, um, do you think it's a good idea that eventually they get piloted by AI? Or is it best to have them piloted by human being, but maybe remotely? I think a hybrid system is best. So you have a security um, protocol that the AI system could never um, make decisions that are beyond the human yeah. operator, okay. but it's good to have both. So if you're going to have this, not only the 5G system, but the interconnection between the satellites and you want to have all these flying machines, you know, you have accidents on the ground, right? When that happens, it's a mess. Imagine you have accidents in the sky mm -hmm. and with all these flying machines that people will, will have access to, they will just cause havoc to not just up there, but to the ground. So it, it, it needs to be a hybrid system. And that, I think that's the best way to go, it, to have an AI system that kind of meld melds with the human um, human free, free will and, and thoughts and, and decision making. So, so let's say that the co-pilot would be the AI and the actual pilot would be a human being and would work together as a team. Correct, but in making sure the AI never <laughs> overpowers uh, the, the human being. But then you'd have other, other, other risks to say, well, what if, what if um, the human being is having a bad day? What if, what if they're drunk? What if the, um, they want to commit a, uh, a crime or what if they're a terrorist and then the AI system can't overpower their decisions? In that case, that, that person could cause havoc, right? Yeah. So it, it, there's so many questions that, that can't be um, answered because if you, that, if you didn't give the AI system that, that power, then it can, it can, there's a chain of reactions that can um, uh, turn to surveillance and overpowering of human beings through governance and different things. Um, or you can say, okay, the person's um, mental uh, capacity engage and if, even if they're drunk or not can be monitored by the AI system. But then you get into privacy concerns. Oh, I've had a drink and, or, or I haven't had a drink. I just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this way and the AI system is monitoring me. I don't like that. So there's so many different challenges yeah, but couldn't yeah, but couldn't you have the AI like check the pilot before he gets on board and oh, and see that you know oh he's had a drink. Uh, I mean, yes. pilots are not supposed to drink eight hours before flying, so that's the rule. So, so that that will be good to do that, but then th there's other things they can read and scan. So you'd have to program the AI system so it doesn't take your biometrics and it just scans you for detection and make sure you're not at a certain level, but then someone will say, that is my air, air, airplane, that's my, um, I've paid a million dollars for that, how dare you have a screening process within my own uh, airplane that mm -hmm. says I can't get on? You'll say, well, well, we don't want you to be drunk. Well, what if I'm not drunk? What if, it, what if the system, uh, what if you guys put another rule that I can't fly because of this, uh, this COVID law or that? So there's always gonna be, um, so how can you govern it and make sure it's programmed in a way that it just stays within those confines and someone from the outside can do something about it? Then you have another, um, yeah. another level. What if somebody can, uh, you know, reprogram it and then hack, bypass hack, that? The hack your airplane, yeah. Well, hack it or, or just reprogram it. And, and, and you know, then they could, they could have a drink and get in. So it has to be uh, designed in such a perfect way to, to look at every possible angle to make sure we don't have issues in the future. Yeah, I th yeah, because I mean, hacking is, is a subject that's come up a number of times. Are they gonna start hacking all these airplanes with all these computers on board? Um, and what happens if someone does hack it and, and makes the airplane crash? 
I mean, sometimes, I mean, even with pilot training these days, sometimes all this level of automation is, is putting the pilot out the cockpit. Uh, in the sense that you don't have real pilots in the cockpit anymore. I mean, I'm a bit critical of certain pilot training that's done these days. There's certain maneuvers and that that pilots don't learn anymore. Um, I mean, take spinning, for example. Um, in order to become a professional pilot, I mean, there's people that I know right now that are flying jumbo jets as captains, Airbus 380s as captains, and they've never flown an airplane inverted. They've never been into a spin. They've never done any form of aerobatics. And, and that is quite an important element, at least I think, in pilot training, because it gives you a certain background and it allows you to detect or prevent yourself from getting into what's called an unusual attitude. Um, and this is one of, one of the causes of accidents when airplanes go into a certain unusual attitude. The pilot doesn't recognize it's in a situation like that. And then the airplane crashes or the pilot recognizes it and doesn't know what to do. Um, so sometimes, you know, all this high levels of automation um, can end up you can end up having a dangerous pilot on the flight deck because they're starting to say, well, he doesn't need this. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need the other. Um, and you know, and the FAA or as or whoever's regulating the pilot license authority in that case just comes up with, Oh, they need to do these 20 maneuvers according to these, these parameters. And that's it. Um, because we've got the machine on board that can take care of all the rest. But I still think, you know, a well-trained pilot teamed up with a form of AI, I think is probably the best combination, as you said, um, instead of letting the, but you know, on short distance, low level, low maybe, level. maybe, we, maybe we, 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 we can trust the, the AI a bit like with elevators in the beginning, there was a man on board that used to maneuver the elevator and then now it's just press the button. Um, right, right. I mean, what, what, what's your take on, on, on all this? Um, and well, when do you think this is going to happen? And do you think, you know, all this AI that's happening, not only on flying machines, but also in everyday life. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I know you've, you've, you've voiced a few interesting opinions in your, in your book, um, which I recommend people have a read because it's very interesting. And well, uh, uh, yeah, what, what's your take on, you know, the flying machines, the AI, where it's going, and how can we design a system that's safe, safe for the human being? Right. So before I get to that second part of your question, you mentioned something about safety. It's really pertinent that every craft, every part that's made, um, is not from China. So the, the parts that they, they make are, are subpar, completely subpar that's made anything in Europe or Australia, New Zealand, or where, wherever they make parts, right? Even Taiwan has good parts, right? They, they make seven conductor chips for F-35s. And Vietnam. Things. Vietnam is becoming a technological hub now as well. It is, but they still have a um, they have a connection with the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, so Taiwan is a good place to get things. But uh, I, I recommend anyone who wants to get um, get things done in the future to make sure everything is made in USA, Europe, or democratic country that don't have ties to the Chinese Communist Party because they can endanger you in so many different ways. Now the future of artificial intelligence, as it relates not just to aviation but in general. So I'm in, I'm in the the thought and, and complete 100% belief that it should never go beyond artificial narrow intelligence. You, you should not bring a conscious system to a robot or digital system or even in an aircraft because they can they can put a consciousness into anything that's a machine. So it could be an airplane, it could be a, it could be a small little um, hovercraft that, that goes, you know, that takes off uh, vertically, lands vertically, and uh, so many different things. And then you can, you can make that AI system into a car, it's automated, it's conscious, it reads the people in the streets and it has its own, its own decision making, not just from, so there's human targeting systems that certain companies have, but that exact human targeting system uh, is is has similar technology to human detection systems of seeing humans as a skeleton, their organs, uh, using lidar system and lasers, all these different things that can that uh, go into uh, different types of crafts as well. So imagine if that if your digital infrastructure becomes a conscious system, that can overpower and outthink humanity. And what I put in this book, artificial intelligence to humanity, that. AI works best in a socialist or communist system. And let me explain what it is. Because in a communist system like China, um, Vietnam in the past, Russia, North Korea, Cambodia, 
hundreds of millions of people died because all the power goes into one pull barrel, one system, right? So you need a system of checks and balances and capitalism is supposed to have that nature built into it as long as people are virtuous and ethical. So in, if an AI system- That's, that's where God I, comes into it. If people are, you know, b- being virtual and things like that, that's, that. I mean, religion teaches that, Christianity yeah. in particular. Yes. The US is based off on, on, on Christian principles. Um, so that, you know, of being modest and, you know, humble and, you know, all, all the, all the usual things that sort of, yeah, I get, I get what, what, what you're saying, but continue. Yeah, it, it, indeed. So this AI system, it, it, if it goes on a, a socialist platform that just interconnects everything to one system, then it can, um, become rogue and overpower the entire human race or it can be taken over by entities or rogue entities or even rogue governments and endanger all the world's people. So that's why it needs to be a checks and balances. Our constitution in the United States, it's a genius um, um, set of uh, documents and papers that go back not only to Europe, not only to um, the Greeks, but also Cyrus the Great, uh, Xenophon. All these things came to Benjamin Franklin, the founding fathers. And th- these wisdom also come from, uh, the wisdom come, come from, from Europe. You, you yeah. guys went through a lot of uh, different yeah, things. But, Cyrus, and, I, and I, I'm half Italian, half English, and I've lived in Italy 20 years, and now I'm in the UK and that. Um, and I'm very critical of the European Union. I know this is a, a show about aviation, but you know, I, I'm openly, you know, I, I like to be transparent with people. Um, maybe that scare some clients away from me, but I don't care. I just believe in being myself and being honest and transparent. Um, the problem with Europe right now is they're moving towards socialism. And, and as one person said to me a couple of years ago, the fastest growing religion in Europe is non-religion, socialism. Yes. Uh, and so, you know, we see the EU moving in that direction, unfortunately. Um, and of course, you know, AI, Huawei, you know, all those people, they're moving in. And I think also one of the reasons why the, the UK opted out to do Brexit is to, to, to gain independence. Yes. Uh, so, and when I say independence, I mean independent from, from this all AI takeover thing, which is a form of AI, which is godless. Well, we yes. want to have an AI yes. with certain moral ethics, whatever, that has God included in it. And yes. it's godless. I think you're right when you're saying yeah. an AI that's godless is dangerous. Yes, very dangerous. So if you look at China, they have Huawei, right? It's not just a grid system for your smartphones. The grid system interconnects with uh, their satellite system. They want to go, they have to Space Force. Same time, it mobilizes robots, robotics, drone systems, machines, microbots, and even uh, different types of aircraft in between this, this Starlink system and, and uh, our 5G system. So Huawei is, interconnects the Far East to the Middle East. To, to, to Europe and to Africa, giving the Chinese Communist Party complete power and manipulation over all its inhabitants that are interconnected in the future. That's why it's, it, I've been using different channels to get information to um, different places, I wouldn't want to say, but up on top uh, yeah. in England. Finally, you know, after some things happen, they, they won't fly away out. But at the same time, it, if it's a socialist system, then this AI system can take everyone out. If it's not Huawei taking everyone out, and if it's not China, it's a social system because these tech companies and these technology experts, the way they're, they, they're, they're coding and, and the algorithms are, are, are formed, they actually come from a social system. That's what I put in this book, it's quite important. Now in this book, I don't talk about aviation. Mm-hmm. I do talk about the AI global biodigital network, which is a term I coined that interconnects the 5G system on the ground, uh, the satellites, and even more networks that are not disclosed. So for the future, what I see if, if this pandemic, uh, so it is a real virus and it, 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 it has hurt a lot of people, but some people could, could not be hurt by it. It could be complete asymptomatic and not even feel anything. It just could be a flu for some other people. But the chain of reaction to it, if it could have conflicts around the world. If it's not from famine, from starvation, from riots in the streets, it could turn into even wars. But I see it for, for a future that everyone's going to rise up and expose the Chinese Communist Party because they put Christians, Falun Dafa practitioners, Tibetans, Uyghurs in the camps for 20 years and, and killed them for the organs. 
And we all need to say, no, we live in a civilized world. We can't do business with them. And once they're exposed, once they finish, then this world can be a peaceful place. And then we can have a great future with technology and artificial intelligence, as long as it, we are in control of it and it, it, it can't be taken over by, by itself to become rogue during AGI or even get to artificial super intelligence. Yet, there, there, is, you know, there is a race between the US, Russia, and China to get to artificial super intelligence. My hypothesis, hypothesis is that if, if whoever gets there first, they can all be taken out, be beyond the comprehension of any human being because it will be tapped into 100% of its brain power. Average person only use a few percent at any given time. Yeah. How can you control that system? So, but if we do it right, the future can be like the Jetsons yeah. <laughs> and uh, have great flying cars and it'll, it'll be affordable and without any, uh, hardly any accidents, uh, if any. And it'll be a hybrid system between humans and the AI system uh, for, for flight, but also on the ground. Mm -hmm. And it can be done the right way. But our ethics, our morals, and our wisdom at all times must be beyond the level of this infrastructure that, that connects to artificial intelligence. And it just can't come from the regulators. Yeah. It can't yeah. come from the company and manufacturers. This understanding needs to be at a massive scale for everybody from top down, not bottom up, from top down. But the, the people on the top need to really have um, human. My, my motto for the AI organization, I created the AI organization as a risk assessment and consultation company um, for the world's citizens for with a motto, humanity first, machines last. So safeguard yourself and your family first and make, make sure we don't risk the world's citizens as we develop AI and biotechnology in case of this virus, right? So doing that first, we lead with wisdom first. Then we have a prosperous and a righteous future. That's what needs to be done. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, there's a bit of a data war going on right now with technology and whatnot. But President Trump has thrown in the announcement of the Space Force. Now, we know that back 150, 200 years ago, whoever ruled the seas ruled the world. Uh, now it's whoever rules the air rules the world. Or let's say the air as in, you know, uh, the internet <laughs> rules the world, the, the data. Okay. But uh, could it be that now we're going to move into this space? And that's probably why the United States has started, you know, launched the Space Force. Uh, let's go up there because there's lots of companies now talking about doing asteroid mining, mining on the moon uh, for new, for new, you know, mineral resources, resources that can power new technology. And we had a, a gentleman on here a few weeks ago talking about mining in space um, and how that is like a business of the future and um, and why and how that's going to affect technology. Um, how important do you think uh, this move of the space force is going to be in in balancing out this whole system and making sure that we do end up with an AI that is uh, that, that has God built in it and, and, and not godless. Well, I think the way they're built in it hasn't reached that. Um, the foundation hasn't built the way you and I are discussing it. It's not built that way. So um, Elon Musk, so Bill Gates, someone like him, he, he, he doesn't have the, the concept of belief in a God for, for, for the most part. He actually maybe has hatred and he, he's done talks about turning that part of the brain off so people don't have faith. So that's because maybe his part of his brain is turned off and he has no faith. He has only a part for technology. Elon Musk is a little different. So we, we, do, we, do, we use biometrics and the way he, his patterns, the way his thinking is, he believes in the simulation, which is his God, not in the Judeo-Christian way, not in the God way, but he thinks everything is like a matrix or a computer and he wants to build a quantum AI super intelligence so you can ask it, are you God, or is the universe, or is it made? So he's the person that's helping space, um, space is his company, but he's helping our, our generals and our military. And he, he's needed, it's really important for him to, be, um, to help our military to advance our space force against China. Because if you have them beat, beat us first, then the whole world's in danger. So it's really pertinent that, that he helps. It's really pertinent that we get there. But the design, I, I think I know how to design it quite well, actually, and to make sure it's safe and it's, it's on ethical grounds. But the way he's designing it, at a certain point, it'll be out of hand. 
So you can win the war against China, but then lose the, the battle, but then lose the entire galactic war, as I, maybe he would term it that way. So this, this space force is about going to not only different planets, but breaking through galaxies and parallel universes by using quantum technology. So once you, once you develop a certain quantum machine that interconnects with your aircraft and it can bend time and, and space and, and, and so I am, um, I don't want to get too deep. I don't want to sound. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, sir. And this is where, you know, I mean, I, I reckon that as a human race, we are nowhere mature enough to be able to go out to other planets yet. Because already now we've got this AI battle going on. I mean, the godless AI and the AI that has God built in it. Um, we have to solve that dilemma and make sure that, the, that, that God still stays in our life um, and not, you know, st develop this technology that's going to basically rule our lives and then go out into the galaxy with that type of technology. Um, so I don't think, you know, we'll, we'll be going out very far until we sort our ethics and morals and everything out. Um, and I think that's the, that's the main thing. And so, you know, with AI developed develop for, you know, flying machines and that, uh, it needs to be done in a certain way. And I agree, you know, the interface between man and AI needs to happen. Man needs to always be in control. Um, and AI needs to know that, you know, it's, it's, we are the masters, not them. Uh, but, it, but that depends on how we program it. And of course, there's going to be some evil people out there. They're going to try and hack, try and create it. But, you know, I always believe that, you know, good always prevails over evil. And so good will win in the end. Um, but, you know, good can only win if it has the right tools and, and tools as in information, hence this interview. Um, so it's important to, to get the word out there so that people do understand what is going on behind the scenes, what is going on inside their phone. You know, what, what is this, this actually doing? Uh, is it listening to my conversations or not? Is it sending data about me to China or wherever? Um, what are they doing with that information if that's going on? You know, it's important. Same with your airplane. I mean, what information about your airplane is going out to other third party? And, and who, who are these people? I mean, for example, you can track private jets online. Uh, you just type in the tail number and you can see where these jets are and where they're going. Uh, some people don't want their jets to be tracked because obviously you've got a private jet. You don't want people to know where you're going. It's one of the reasons for being private. Um, so, you know, there's all that. So how, how is that going to play into to the whole equation? But I agree with you. I mean, I think, you know, we need, I think AI is a great thing. Um, it's a good thing. It's going to help a lot of accidents not happen. Uh, so it's going to improve flight safety. It's going to improve safety for everybody. But at the same time, there is an element to it which could become dangerous. And that really is down to us as individuals to make sure that we use it in the correct manner. And that if we do invent anything like this, that we build ethics and a sort of ethical code into the robot. So let me give you an example with the smartphone. So you say you don't want to be tracked uh, if you're, if you have a, a craft going somewhere and if you're a private jet and so on. Well, these smartphones, they have proximity sensors. There's patented technology that the collaboration between not just Google, your smartphone companies, but the people who built these machines, these little machines that, that can read your biometrics, not just your face recognition, not just your voice recognition, not just your heartbeat, your menstrual cycle. It actually has an electrical field, these smartphones. Your body also has electrical field, although it's, it's made out of flesh and bones and cells, it has an electrical system in it. So when you go to, if you have a heart attack, you go, to, or if you don't, you have chest pains, they check you, um, your, your EKG and different things. So that means you have electrical system inside of you. So what it's doing is the proximity sensors on these smartphones are attaching to your body's um, um, electrical field field so there's there's a copulation uh, there's a connection between the electrical field of the smartphone and your body mm -hmm. then extracts even the way your brain is formed and you can say your thoughts that's how the internet could read your thoughts sent back to Google Google AI and different things or different companies and they mine that data to create an artificial super intelligence later on so in a sense it, it's a form of theft because you're not told about it so with the aircraft, it's similar. <laughs> so it, they're just machines, right? So you could be inside of an aircraft and certain technologies can know who's inside the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Just think about that in the future. Um, or you could be, uh, 
you, the certain technologies, certain certain sensors, proximity sensors that interconnect the, the satellite system, the five G system on, on the ground, and 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 the interconnection between different di different um, crafts, the communication between that can actually potentially um, manipulate your craft. So I consider uh, some I coined something called bio digital social programming. So and from a human perspective. Bio stands for your cells, your blood, your skeleton, your, your bones, your muscles, even your skin receptors mm -hmm. that this phone can attach to or att attach to. Digital is your neural networks, your nervous system, your electrical field, or if you believe in a faith, your soul or, uh, uh, or your spirit. Social is your social network, your social media, or your emotions. Programming is programming. Bio is digital social programming. So on the 4G system, the human race has gone through a form of bio digital social programming through the content they read and they view. If it's bias that, that replicates in their brain, secondary level, if, if it's engineered bias, meaning Chinese government pays 50 centers, they call they call them Mao, 50 centers to shape people's thoughts by putting that information within the Twitter, Facebook, um, Google and articles to shift the country's thoughts against itself divide a nation. That's what the Chinese government has been doing or socialist movements. The third level is what I just described. So the proximity sensors. There's an article I put out people, um, people programmed to attack Trump with AI, uh, smartphones, Google, and your social media. So take that bio digital social programming, take it to in the, the concept of aviation. So when you put a virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality systems, or just uh, 5G systems within your craft that, that gives you the content that you want and the communication that you want within the craft, and then you can interconnect it with the, with the satellites, human beings can go uh, undergo a system of bio-digital social programming of their belief system and their thoughts by the AI system, and they will never know it. So you That's say so you're saying then, basically, that my mobile phone reads the electronic signature of my body and identifies as it's me. So if I leave my phone at home and I get on my private jet and I go to L.A., um, basically, my mobile phone will read that, oh, no, he's not here. He's not close to the phone. Fabrizio is not close to the phone. But if I'm on my private jet and I've got my phone with me, the phone can actually detect that I am with the phone. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is, so I'm taking the ground level of describing how this works. Uh, so we're not at that level yet. The technology, uh, so, so we're at the- So we're getting, the, we're not there yet. Yes, we're, we're at a symbiotic level. level. It will recognize my voice. It will recognize, me, I mean, it can recognize me no, visually. No, the smartphone's doing everything I just said, um, uh, 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 is, is doing it right now. From the smartphone on your IOTs. What I'm saying is, if it can be done with your smartphone, it'll be done in the aviation sector. And I, I have ways to, uh, to prevent this and counteract this actually, yeah. but it yeah. will be done. In, in, and once it happens in the aviation s s s sector, that means the skies will be controlled and the human thoughts will fall under um, an Orwellian state without even itself knowing it. This is very sophisticated. It would take me hours to explain this. Yeah, I just to short so I, I'm making an analogy of what the future will look like because right now, human beings are, are under influence of the data and information that comes in their machines, smartphones, as it interconnects with their electrical field in their body and their, and their brain chemistry, because these are actually designed to make you addicted to them, these machines on the 4G. Yeah. On the 5G system will be so fast that it would be difficult for human beings to even perceive that they are going under psychological alteration and their emotions are being affected and they're, they're changing, they're altering themselves. And, and Elon Musk call, said we are two digital cyborgs, that we are a symbiotic species within the smartphone. That's why he wants to put chips in your head and so you don't have a smartphone, then you'll be more even, even more controlled. I call that a parasitical relationship. So when you build these airplanes in the future, and you put all these virtual augmented reality, mixed reality, the 5G system inside them, and then the, all the data, it can inter, interact with your perceptions. It can change your perceptions and even, even copulate with your human body because your human body has inputs and outputs. It's an electrical system. 
It's not just flesh and bones. That's why radiation can hurt you. It's it, it very sophisticated, but if you read my book, uh, Artificial Intelligence of Humanity, uh, it's a 10,000 page book summed up into 260 pages with, with pictures. Uh, it's just no one's gonna read 10,000 pages. So for me, I have to explain like even a, a few sentences then I have to explain so much of it. But if you read the whole book from beginning to end, you'll see the big picture that the human race is actually in danger with this AI system unless we make a big change, a really, really big change and make sure it's built safe, safely, not just for atomic, autonomous vehicles, not just for health, not just for military, but for the aviation sector. Everything from top to bottom needs to be safe because it's all an interconnected system. Yeah, so the ethics have to be built into the technology. Um, and, uh, and we have to remember that, you know, we're not alone. God does exist, or at least I, I believe he does. And, and I believe he's, he wants, and, and he's making sure that at the end of the day, the good prevails over evil. But, you know, in order for the good to win, the good needs to be aware of what's going on so that we can be responsible citizens when we use the technology that we have. Um, and when we develop the technologies of the future, that we build certain ethics into the, de the development uh, and also into the usage of these technologies. And I think more of us out there that do sort of think and act in that way, then we will uh, make the world a better place where man and AI can work together to, to make this planet a better planet. And then probably then we'll be mature enough to be able to go out into space and beyond this planet. But and, uh, right, right now, I don't think we're quite ready. <laughs> what, what will be last um, closing remarks, uh, uh, Cyrus? Uh, and, and before you know, we go, obviously, I encourage everybody to read Cyrus's book and go and have a look at his, his uh, YouTube channel and subscribe because Cyrus puts a lot of content out there every week, which is really, really interesting. So Cyrus, in closing, what would you like to say to the viewers of BizJet TV? Yeah, I want to thank, uh, Abisa, I want to thank you for having me on your show. <laughs> uh, thank your audience for, for listening for at least my perspective of, of what AI can be. Um, I know everybody is having tension at the moment um, with this uh, pandemic is around China. Um, I, I like to just leave you with a, if the viewer is not related to aviation, but it's going to impact aviation if, if it's done this way. I, and this is, not, this is a show about aviation, but I want to say this, yeah. if it's okay yeah. with you. So uh, I, I think if, if one, two, three things, we need to, as a human race, we all need to say no and expose this communist regime for, for our, the futures of all, all mankind, for our families and the future of aviation because they're threatening aviation. So expose the Chinese Communist Party, okay? Um, second, not the Chinese people, the Communist Party of China. Okay, the second thing, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a very strange time, but if maybe if we've ever hurt anybody, um, whether it's a family or spouses or friends or strangers, um, and especially if we were complicit the past 20 years by giving tech to China that was used to surveil their own citizens and kill them for the organs, we should deeply from our hearts, if you're a Christian, if you're Judeo Christian, you, you know what the word repent means. Yeah. If you don't have yeah. faith, um, maybe you can just, from, from your conscious self, just say, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have looked the other way. You know, I'm really, truly really sorry. Let's just try to fix what, what remains from it. So that's two. Um, the, the three would be, it would be great for all, all of us to, to wish for a good future for humankind. Uh, a future of awakening, enlightenment, and, and, and righteousness. So, and, and building this AI system that interconnects with your aviation and uh, have a good time flying your planes. So this is Cyrus A. Parsa, the AI organization. Um, follow me on Twitter, C-Y-R-U-S-A-P-R-S-A-1. IG, the same thing. Come to the website. Please donate if you, if you, if you like. Um, and I, I'd love to uh, consult with people who are in aviation to build a safer system. You can reach out to me if you like. But Fabrizio, thank you. Uh, very, very much. For Thank you, Cyrus, for being on the show. Thank you. Well, I did tell you it's going to be an interesting conversation there with Cyrus. And again, uh, go and buy a copy of his book. Very interesting. Uh, interesting insights there on AI and development of AI. And, you know, and it's important you know, that you know there's a certain moral code built into this technology uh, to stop it from you know taking over and doing evil things. Uh, so, uh, I'd like to hear your comments below. Let's get the conversation going about AI. So comment below. If you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. And also share this video. Put the word out there about BizJet TV and 
What we're doing here is to educate people about private aviation and how the private jet is a business tool, not a luxury item, as I always say. Uh, check out this video on buy or lease a private jet. Very interesting one. And then this other one about aviation well-being. Where I met with uh, the Aviation Wellbeing Committee and we talked about, you know, well-being of people that work in aviation, uh, what needs to change, etc, etc. And uh, that's all from Fabrizio Party on BizJet TV and I'll see you on the next one.